Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering unboxing. So yesterday the 27th of February 2015 saw the release of the new Elspeth vs Kiora Jewel decks. So we're going to be taking a look at this. I've not had a look at the deck lists already so this is going to be a new, new one for me. So we'll, uh, we'll see what's inside the box. And just a quick look at the back here. I don't think the basic makeup of these has changed since the last one. So we've got two 60 card decks, two deck boxes, four creature tokens. So they always sort of include uh, creature tokens that are relevant to the particular decks or deck. There's a strategy insert, a magic rules reference card, which sort of has now taken the place of that how to play that, that was used several years ago. And as it says, the the decks have cards from all across Magic's history, so the cards in here are are not are not necessarily standard legal. And there's six cards with new artwork as well in here. So let's open this up. Very nice. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but it's a very nice shiny sort of yellow and blue. The gold and blue uh, box here. Okay, so we'll start cracking this open in a moment. So these are our infamous card boxes, which will just basically hold the open product and nothing more. So. Uh, they're too small, really, to get sleeve decks in. Um, these are quite wide, but they're just not, basically, they're not thick enough. So they just take the, the sort of unsleeved deck. So they're, they're handy for storage, um, and that's about it, really. I think in this one... Oops. So both the lead cards are foils, as you can see there. There are two packs here, and inside of the packs there'll also be the uh, the tokens. Let me just put that to one side. So this is the the rules reference card. This is like the slimmed down version of what used to be a how to play guide. So it really just does just has. You know, getting started in the game, parts of the turn, and a bit about the sort of layout of the of the card and how basic lands and mana work, and that that's it really. So this is the other thing that you get, and obviously this is pretty important. This is the uh, how to play the decks guide. And so on this you, you also have, have the card listings and, and obviously if you're interested in where the cards come from then this is a, a real valuable resource. These are just straight 60 card decks, there's no sideboards in this and obviously they're designed and optimised to be played against one another. Um, although you can obviously play them beyond that and obviously you can tweak them with cards from your own collection. So this, the Elspeth side of things, looks like it's a mono white deck. Uh, you can see, looking at the land base, fairly pretty simple. We've got 22 planes and two secluded st steeps or steps. Um, it's going to give us obviously some utility. And um, then you can see that we've got uh, various cards here from from all over Magic's history. We've got uh, Elspeth Sun Champion from Theros, and it always puts like notable printings because some of these cards have had multiple printings all over the place. So we've got one here which is a Cassian Javelineers, which uh, was originally printed way back in Fallen Empires, and we've got uh, Legacy, Lawin, Zendikar, Exodus, Onslaught, Meridian Besieged, Scourge. Born of the Gods, Playing the Chaos, and so on. The Kiora deck, 
here. And that room on camera. Um, is green blue. Uh, Cure of the Crushing Wave from Born of the Gods. And again, you know, all over the place. Theorist Dissension, Born of the Gods, Visions, World Wake, Journey into Nyx, Conflux, Gate Crash, Nemesis, and let's just look at the mana base. So we've got 11 forests, 11 islands, a Temple of the False God. So again, some utility there. And um, <clears throat> a couple of fetch lands, Evolving Wilds. Okay, so let's just crack open these and actually look at the, uh, the decks themselves from a, from a card point of view. So let's start off with the, the Elspeth here. Let's zoom in. And you can see again, as is always the case with these, uh, these dual decks, they have their own unique set logo as well, and all the cards will have that. So, you know, you can sort of uh, basically evaluate where, when you look at cards, it's possible to see what, where they've come from, whether they've come from a, a dual deck or whether they uh, were originally printed in, in the sets. And of course, some of these cards would have been printed in sets before the modern card frames. Um, and obviously card frames have changed several times now. So again, we, all of these are in these, these newer card frames as well. So Elspeth's Sun Champion is four and two white. Planeswalker Elspeth has four loyalty. Plus one, put three one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. Minus three, destroy all creatures with power four or greater. And the minus seven ultimate is you get an emblem with creatures you control, get plus two, plus two, and have flying. So let's move the, through the deck now. So Precinct Captain, uh, two white, it's a rare. What I tend to do with this is, is I, I tend to sort of read out the, the rares and the, the sort of notable cards that may be of interest. Uh, so it's uh, two white, two two, creature human soldier, first strike when Precinct Captain deals combat damage to a player, put a one one white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. Gus Cloak Saviour, also a rare. Four and a white, three, four, flying. Whenever a creature you control becomes blocked, you may untap that creature and remove it from combat. That was a, a sort of reoccurring theme on on these gust cloaks. This, and this is from fairly from an, an older set, basically. But um, there were a lot of gust cloak creatures that had this uh, thing where they would uh, you could untap a creature and remove it from from combat. Captain of the Watch, another rare, 4 and 2 white, 3 3 vigilance. Other soldier creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have vigilance. When Captain of the Watch enters the battlefield, put 3 1 1 white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. It's no surprise, and when you see the S Elspeth in the deck, that this is going to be a, a sort of soldier, and also um, there's probably going to be a you know, good degree of soldier tokens in here as well. Dictate of Heliod, also another rare. Three and two white enchantment has flash. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. So we're going to see some pumping going on here as well. Both to soldiers and also generally. Uh, Decree of Justice, XX, two colourless, two white. Another rare. Sorcery, put X, four, four white angel creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. It's also got cycling for two and a white. So for two and a white you can simply discard the card and draw a card. When you cycle Degree of Justice, you may pay X. If you do, put X, 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. Ekatian Javelin is. That's one white for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, with, uh, obviously, some ability on there. So moving on to a couple of commons here. So there's two of those. Mother of Runes. A uh, single white for 1-1, one, one. tap target creature you control gains protection from the colour of your choice until end of turn. Kins Kinsbale Skirmisher, 1 and a white 2-2 two, two, with an ability. And there's a 
couple of those. The score core sky fisher, one in a white, two three with flying and an ability. Veteran armor smith, two white, two three. Looks like all of these aren't going to be vanilla creatures. Even the commons can have some sort of useful ability that's going to help with, in this case, other soldier creatures you control get plus zero plus one. And there's two of those in the deck. Court Street Denizen, two and a white, two two creature, human soldier. Whenever another white creature enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Standing Troops, two and a white, one four, creature, human soldier with vigilance. Veteran Swordsmith, two and a white, three two. And two of those. Again, giving other soldier creatures you control plus one plus zero. Banish a priest. What, uh, color, one colour is two white, two two. When banish a priest enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until banish a priest leaves the battlefield. Another gust cloak creature. Uh, one colourless, two white, two two. Flying whenever gust cloak harrier becomes blocked, you may untap it and remove it from combat. Two of those. So more Gus Cloaks, Gus Cloak Skirmisher, three and a white, two, three with flying. Whenever Gus Cloak Skirmisher becomes blocked, you may untap it and remove it from combat. So this is what I was talking about. Gus Cloak Sentinel, two and two white for a three, three. Same sort of thing. This doesn't have flying. Loxidon Partisan, four and a white with a three, four with battle cry on it. So battle cry whenever this creature Attacks each other attacking creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. So you can see there's lots of pumping going on in this deck. Loxidon, another Loxidon partisan. A gem palm avenger, five and a white, three five with cycling for two and a white. And when when you cycle it, soldier creatures get plus one plus one and gain first strike until end of turn. Noble Templar. Five and a white, three six with vigilance and plain cycling for two colourless. So here's our secluded step. So it enters the battlefield, tapped, tap, add one white to your mana pool. And the utility on this is it's got cycling for a white. So for one white, you can discard the card and draw a card. So if this isn't, if you don't need mana, then you can basically cycle this. Dauntless onslaught, two and a white. Instant, up to up to two target creatures, each get plus two plus two until end of turn. Another of those secluded steps, and then we move on to the planes. So I would expect that there's going to be a lot more um, sort of non-creature spells in this deck further down here. Also, and I don't know for sure, maybe someone can uh, can correct me on this, but often what they'll do with the artwork is, is they'll sort of tie it into the, the home plane of the Planeswalker. So this, this artwork probably comes from a set that is relevant to Elspeth. Okay, here we go. So Mortals Ardor. A white for an instant target creature gets plus one plus one and gains life link until end of turn. Sun Lance, single white sorcery, Sun Lance deals three damage to target non white creatures. It's a couple of those. Mighty Leap, one and a white target creature gets plus two plus two and gains flying until end of turn. Raise the alarm, two and a white instant, put two one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. A couple of those. Soul Parry, one and a white. Prevent all damage. One or two target creatures would deal this turn. Celestial Flare. Two white target player sacrifices an attacking or blocking creature. And then we have some soldier tokens here. So there's a couple of those. Okay, so that's our that's our Elspeth Sun Champion deck. So now let's look at the Kiora the Crushing Wave. So for the lead card Kiora. It's a two colourless green blue Planeswalker Kiora, two loyalty, 
So plus one until your next turn bring all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent controls. Minus one draw a card. You may play an additional land this turn. And minus five ultimate. You get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step put a nine nine blue kraken creature token onto the battlefield. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to see what's in this deck whether we get like a sort of seafaring <laughs> themed deck or uh, there's merfolk in here already i can see there's a there's a crack in here at the top of the pile okay so five and two white creature kraken six six when scourge of the fleets enters the battlefield return each creature your opponent controls with toughness x or less to its owner's hand where x is the number of islands you control Simic Sky Swallower. So it'd be interesting to see with in, in a green blue deck whether there's a, a Simic theme in here or not. You know, that uses, I suppose, um, abilities that, that are associated with Simic. So five green blue, six six Simic Sky Swallower creature leviathan flying trample and shroud so this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities and notice that's that's full-on shroud that's not hexproof so it, it can't be the target of any spells or abilities even if, if you're trying to target it inkwell leviathan seven and two blue uh, artifact creature leviathan it's a seven eleven it's also a rare, like the Simic Sky Swallower. Trample and Island Walk. So with Island Walk, this creature can't be blocked as long as a defending player controls an island. Shroud as well on that one. Whelming Wave. Return all creatures to their owner's hands except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses and Serpents. That's two and two blue. It's also a rare. Plasm Capture. Two green, two blue, instant. Counter target spell. At the beginning of your next pre-combat main phase, add X mana in any combination of colours to your mana pool where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Omen Speaker. So this is common. Uh, one colourless blue, one three. When Omen Speaker enters the battlefield, you get to scry for two. So look at the top two cards of your library. And put any number of them on the bottom of your library and the rest on the top in any order. Coiling oracles in this deck. Green, blue, 1-1. One, one. Creature snake, elf, druid. When coiling oracle enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. Looks like there's a couple of those. Cura's follower. Green, blue, 2-2. Two, two. Creature merfolk. Tap. Untap another target permanent. Grazing Glade Heart, two and a green for a two two, with landfall on it. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain two life. So there's a bit of life gain in here. A couple of those. Netcaster Spider, so it's two and a green, two three. It's spider, so it's going to have reach on it, so it can block creatures with flying. And whenever Netcaster Spider blocks a creature with flying, Netcaster Spider gets plus two plus zero until end of turn couple of those. Mana War, two and a blue, two two. Creature Jellyfish, when Mana War and Spout Field return target creature to its owner's hand. And there's a couple of those. Okay, cool. Law Scale Cottles in the deck. So it's one colourless, green, blue, two two. So this has some counter shenanigans going on with its ability where whenever you draw a card, you may put a one one counter on Law Scale Cottle. And there's a couple of those in the deck. Nessie and Asp. So we have some snakes in here. Um, Nessie and Asp for green, four, five with reach. And six and a green monstrosity four. If this creature isn't monstrous, put four plus one plus one counters on it and it becomes monstrous. Surakar Banisher, four and a blue, three, three. When Surakar Banisher enters the battlefield, you may return a target tap creature to its owner's hand. There's a couple of those in there. Sealock Monster. 
Three colourless, two blue, five five creature octopus. Sea lock monster can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Five and two blue, monstrosity three. When sea lock monster becomes monstrous, target land becomes an island in addition to its other types. So this is how it's going to switch on that ability. And also, um, it would be interesting if there's anything else because we had an island walk earlier. So um, whether or not this is the only card that's going to make something an island or make an, a, a, a target land um, an island. Nimbus Swimmer, X green blue, zero zero flying. When uh, Nimbus Swimmer enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Here's our evolving wild. So these are going to, you can tap these, sacrifice them and search your library for a basic land card and then put it into battlefield tap and shuffle your library. A couple of those. Temple of the False God. So tap add two to your Activate this ability only if you control five or more land. So we've got conditional colourless mana. And then we move on to our forests again. Um, I suspect the artwork is tied into Kiora's home plane. And there's our islands. Okay, so now we've got on to some other spells apart from creatures. So we've got explore. So one and a green sorcery. You may play an additional land this turn, draw a card. And there's a couple of those. Accumulated knowledge, one and a blue, instant, draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of cards named accumulating knowledge in all graveyards. So what have we got here? We've got just no, not surprisingly there's four of those to exploit that. I think it's the only in four of in actually any of these decks. And it's actually quite unusual generally to see four of in a um, in the dual decks. Peel from reality, one colourless blue, instant return target creature you control and target creature you don't control to their owner's hand. Time to feed, two and a green sorcery, choose target creature and opponent controls. When that creature dies this turn you gain three life, target creature you control fights that creature. And there's a couple of those. Explosive vegetation, so it's another one of these ramp cards. Uh, search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Etherize three in a blue, return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. Urban Evolution, three in three green blue, sorcery draw three cards, you may play an additional land this turn. And then we have a couple of Kraken tokens. So there we have it. Uh, we've got the Kiora, the Crushing Wave deck, and the, oops, wasn't too clear, the Elspeth Sons Champion deck from the Elspeth versus Kiora dual decks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.